What is it like to have an anxiety attack? Oh. It is... I can actually tell you what time I had one, because I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, coming back from New York, beautiful trip. Um, we went to go see, you know, Jay-Z did the House of the Book of Hove. We went to go see that and came back. And then it just felt like I came back into reality. And I was thinking about all this stuff that I was like, man, I should have did this after, you know, whatever. And I should have been doing this. And then it got, it went too, too in deep with it, with all my thoughts. And I was walking to the kitchen to get water. And I don't know what happened, but I ended up hitting the floor, like curling up in the corner, just there and like breathing really, really heavily. And um, it took me a minute to like get out of that space. But um, yeah, it wasn't the, it wasn't the greatest. <laughs> um, and thank God that my other was there because if he wasn't there, I would probably still be sitting in that corner. The Nike Dunks. I wanna I wanna tell you exactly what they are, but I forgot. Is this your everyday sneaker or your dream sneaker? This is my everyday sneaker. Well every night sneaker. Cause I'm putting these on at nighttime. <laughs> so you work at night versus the day? Yeah. What's the difference between someone who works at night versus someone who works in the day? Oh my god, I don't think there's a difference, to be quite honest with you. From experience, from working in the day and then working at night, it's the same thing, just the sun's down. <laughs> the sun's just down. It's a little bit lower. It's a little darker outside. It's a little darker outside. Just making it do what it do, you know? Mm -hmm. Something about that sun. <laughs> Something about that it. sun. That sun just, you know, be doing the stuff. No, oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> What's the importance of an everyday sneaker? The importance of an everyday sneaker. Honestly, keeping them clean so that you don't look like they're your everyday sneaker. Um, just being around people. And I have four older brothers, so it was like a, a whole day where we just cleaned shoes. It was like, yeah, go get your shoes. I didn't have shoes, mind you. I had like little girl shoes at the time. They were like, go get your shoes. I'm like, okay, sure. And we just sat there and just cleaned the shoes. And he was like, if you're gonna wear these every day, they gotta look, they gotta look presentable. You can't just be going around people looking all crazy and whatnot. So, yeah. What's the pros and cons of having a bunch of brothers or siblings? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I can give you, I can give you more cons than it is pros. <laughs> um, so I am a, I'm the only girl in a house full of boys. I want to say I had like at least four brothers. And I think one of the biggest cons was dating. Especially like going into dating. Like, you know, that age where you're like, yeah, I'm start dating. Um, that was pretty hard because they're like, oh, um, who was this guy? And then they... 
they just do weird things and i'm like i don't want you guys to be around oh my god especially when i went to prom and it was a guy that i wasn't even dating he decided to force himself to prom with me he was like i'm going to prom with you i was like uh okay whatever um sure i don't care and as we're taking our prom pictures my oldest brother he um he pulls him to the side and they was talking i don't know what the conversation was i don't know what occurred but um he came back to me and was like yeah we're gonna go and then we're gonna come back he was just being all like mm. i was like okay like i didn't want you to come with me anyway but you're giving me stuff to do fine that's cool and then i was like what was the conversation that you guys had at the um like in the corner he was like oh i just gotta get you back by a certain time and um your brother he dapped me up and when he dapped me up he put a bullet in my hand i was like oh oh um sorry <laughs> <Get a little. laughs> i didn't know what to say like when he said the bullet part i was like oh, i i i'm sorry but what time are we going to be back like <laughs> Because I don't want nothing to happen to you. So let's, let's just, um, yeah, let's just, let's just do this and go and come back. So, um, one of the major cons though, not a con, a pro. One of the major pros is they, they're older than me and they, they know boys better than I do because they're them and they, they taught me the the game of it all when it came to dating and how boys would be and then um you know how they try to get in your pants and whatnot and not know what to say and how to say it so when when boys try to like play that game with you like oh yeah i'm gonna date her and then like leave her i'm like you can't play me because i was already taught the game way before you knew it or how it worked so yeah that's one of the major the major things i'm like i'm happy that i had older brothers to teach me all this stuff would you say your brothers did a good job as older brothers i think so they um <laughs> i think they did a good job they are very they knew how to give me my space when I needed it, which was important to me because I'm like, I'm very much get away from me or I'll cut you type of person. Like, I don't want to be bothered. Like, go away. It's a little bit. Go away. Just a little bit. So they knew when to go away and when to come back. So they, they I think they did a, a decent job at being older brothers. <laughs> what do you think they could have done better? Um... To not, I wish they wasn't overprotective. Um, yeah. How so? With me doing stuff in general, it don't even have to be me dating. It could just be like anything in general. They were just very overprotective with everything. They didn't want nobody to hurt me. They didn't want nobody to, you know, run game on me or anything. So I was always, they, are, they had me underneath them all the time. Like I couldn't go nowhere without them giving me the third degree. Like I couldn't even go to the mall with my, my little girlfriends because they was like, oh no, we're going with you. And oh, we have to come too. Like, no, I don't want you to come. Ew, go away. <laughs> so yeah, they could, they could do a little, they still need to work on the overprotective part, so. Hopefully they'll get there one day. <laughs> Do you think they have grown? Yes. Yeah. How so? Um, with the, the person that I'm dating at the moment, at first when I announced it to them that I was dating said person, they was like, what? What do you mean? Ew. Like, he has how many children? And da -da -da -da. I was like... Everybody calm down. He was, they was like, you know what? It's okay. You're going to live your life and this, that, and the third. So just as long as he doesn't hurt you or do anything, you know, weird, we accept him. 
it took him a minute it took him a minute to say all of that but <laughs> yeah yeah a mess just a mess <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll give you yeah. one more. Yeah. What is that on my sheet? Get off. So you left handed or right handed? Right handed. Okay. Why? The way you hold the brush, you hold it like a knife. I don't know why I do that. Cause I got my my nails and then I got my nails and everything, <clears throat> and they like be in the way sometimes. What is life like with depression? Mm, that's a good question life with depression is well for me it's a very a look over your shoulder all the time situation because for me it comes whenever it feels like coming like I can be in this happy space doing the happy things and then depression hits and it's like oh okay girl you're here Okay, and I can't get rid of you? That's, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's very much, I'm looking over my shoulder every minute of the day. Gotta make sure I'm in the, a place where I'm not like, I'm not thinking about depression or anything of that nature. So she won't come around and be like, hey girl, I'm here, you was thinking about me? I'm like, no, I wasn't. I'm trying to make sure you wasn't coming. You know, like, you wasn't invited to the party. So, yeah, that's how life is for me, give or take. Oh, that's clean. Can you describe what the experience of depression is like? Um, and it's weird because someone else asked me that question not too long ago and I told them I was like I can't even describe it to you because it's just it just hits you at a weird moment in time well for me it hits me at a weird moment in time and then being in um, you know like relationships and stuff and they just think, the person just think, oh, well, is it me? Am I the issue? I'm like, no, you're not the issue. It's just sister girl decided to come around and stick around for quite some time. Um, so it's very, it's very difficult, honestly. Okay, little spot, can you come out, please? I really appreciate it. Someone once told me mm -hmm. that anxiety is the action of looking too far into the future and depression is the action of looking and staying too far into the past. How much of that is true? A hundred percent. That's very accurate. Whoever told you that's very smart. <laughs> that's, that, oh my God, that's very accurate. Now that you say that. Um, Cause every time, I notice every time where I get like anxious or I can just feel that anxiety attack coming on. I just think about the shit that I'm not doing that I should be or technically should be doing, but I'm not doing. And it's like, damn, well, how the hell do I get to that space? And then it's like all these thoughts come to you. And that's how you get, you know, that's how I get my little anxiety attacks or whatnot. Cause I'm thinking too far into it. I shouldn't be. I should be just living in the moment, but I'm not. For some pain or reason, you know. So. What is it like to have an anxiety attack? Oh. It is. I can actually tell you what time I had 
one because I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, coming back from New York, beautiful trip. Um, we went to go see, you know, Jay Z did the House of the Book of Hove. We went to go see that and came back, and then it just felt like I came back into reality. And I was thinking about all this stuff that I was like, man, I should have did this after, you know, whatever. And I should have been doing this. And then it got, it went too, too in deep with it, with all my thoughts. And I was walking to the kitchen to get water. And I don't know what happened, but I ended up hitting the floor. Like curling up in the corner, just there and like breathing really, really heavily. And um, it took me a minute to like get out of that space. But um, yeah, it wasn't the, it wasn't the greatest. <laughs> um, and thank God that my other was there because if he wasn't there, I would probably still be sitting in that corner. Um, and I think, I know you didn't ask this, but I think with having anxiety Knowing that you have those people around or people that you know that you can like count on to be there is very, very helpful. Because I swear that man has talked me off a lot of ledges, if you will. Huh? What are three tips you would give to somebody dealing with a panic attack? Breathe slowly, calmly, like if you're breathing heavy. Just, why are you breathing heavy? You don't have to breathe heavy, breathe calmly. Um, with me, um, what helped me the most is, um, what is it, how can I, how can I say this? Doing something, before you know that you're about to have it, do something that brings you joy. Like, it can be anything, like a, like write or if you're a makeup girly do your makeup or like anything like whatever brings you joy do that first before if you feel it coming on do that and then it might ease you might ease your way into it but it won't be as harsh um and then knowing that you're about to have it and knowing that um that you know you have that one person you can call, call that person and talk to them about it before anything else. Um, like I said, having that person, having that one person, or even like a group of people can go a long way, honestly. So yeah, that's what I suggest. <laughs> Um, about yourself? I've learned that I can be triggered easily, which I'm trying to now, I'm working through with my therapist about it. Um, but I also learned that I'm an overthinker and I shouldn't be an overthinker. Um, but once again, I'm working through it, trying not to be that overthinker because that kind of what starts my anxiety is when I start to overthink about things and I put myself like a little box so yeah can you give me a play-by-play -play of what it's like to overthink um hmm. let's see oh actually I can tell you this um maybe I think it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday. I was sitting, sitting on the couch, watching TV. And then I look over, my dog's eating something. I'm like, oh my God. But I'm like, wait a minute, did I not vacuum the floor? And I was like, oh, did I get up and vacuum the floor because he keeps eating. And nine times out of 10, he's gonna get in, you know, whatever. So I start to, I start to go back in the floor, but then I realize I don't have any, you know, what's, what's the stuff called? A little sprinkle sprinkle stuff that you sprinkle on the on the <laughs> oh the sprinkle for the carpet yeah, yeah the seasoning if you will um 
carpet seasoning and then I realized I was like damn I don't have that and I just it went on to damn I didn't do this damn I didn't do that and then I'm like okay let me just let me chill out for a second but then I started thinking about I don't know why this even came into play but I started thinking about the person that I'm dealing with and I started overthinking about our situation and I was like damn what if he doesn't want to or like and then it was just like a deep dive of what ifs like what if he doesn't want to do this what if he does want to do this what are we doing why are we doing it like it's uh, it went it went deep and I was like damn all because I was trying to back in the floor <laughs> I was like oh okay we're here now even though I just wanted to make sure my dog wasn't eating random the floor <laughs> So yeah, that's that's how that goes. It's not great. <laughs> oh, I didn't get you. You're dry enough. Let me touch. Your everyday shoe. Honestly, like an honest answer, I probably treat it better than I treat myself. Cause now that I'm now that I'm sitting here and cleaning my shoe, I'm like, damn, like my shoe was dirty as hell. But um, with these, I would like put back in the box. I'm like, no, I can't get these fucked up, even though they they look a little fucked up. Um, I would throw them back in the box. Not like throw them, but like the original packaging or how it came. Throw them back in the box. And then when I'm about to go put them on again, take them out the box and go about my day. Um, honestly, now that I'm actually sitting here and cleaning said shoe, and I'm like, damn, maybe I should be treating myself this way. Damn, I'm like catering to this one shoe. Like, look at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I was sitting here cleaning I was like wait a minute like I should be doing this to myself but okay we're gonna clean the shoe though <laughs> um, and I look at how I treat myself I'm very harsh to myself like I am my own worst critic known to man I always second guess all the things that I do. Like when I told you about the book club, I second guessed that. I didn't, I started it, I think maybe a month ago, two months ago, give or take. No, a month ago. And before I was, before I decided to start it, I was like, damn, nobody's going with this. Like, why am I even trying to do it? And then I was like, well, maybe somebody might fuck with it. You know, people like reading books. You know what I mean? And then I was like, oh, well, mm, no, I'm not going to do that because this, that, and the third. And eventually it wasn't. But then, <laughs> but then one of the ladies in the group that I'm in was like, do we have a book club? And I was like, oh, shit. Okay, now I got to start it because Sister Girl asked for a book club. And I know Sister Girl going to be in it. So, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, my, I'm very much my own my worst critic on the man I always think something's not going to go right without even doing it without even having to do it I just like mm, that's not going to go right I ain't going to do that but I end up doing it so I'm learning loving myself more as in doing things that I know is going to bring me joy and not try to bring myself down all the time like girl don't second guess yourself like just do what you say you're going to do if it don't work out well shit it don't you know it don't work out but you know don't work 
curses. I'm it's sorry. Really heavy on that. You're good. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. You're good. You're good. I never warned you. Yeah. Why didn't you warn me? It's your fault. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah. Um. Where were we? Because that threw me off. <laughs> uh, loving yourself better. Oh yeah, loving myself better. Um. Taking time out for myself and not having to do things for other people. Because I, I know for a fact I'm the person who goes the extra mile for anybody. Like, if you tell me you need this, I'm going to figure out how to get you this, even though I don't know how. But I'll figure it out. But I've noticed I've done that for so many people, but nobody's done it for me, give or take. So I'm like, damn, I should... My bad. <laughs> I should, um... I should really, like, stop doing that for people and focus on myself more when it comes to stuff like that um, finding hobbies finding me finding a hobby helped with actually my depression and my anxiety because um, I always had something to do give or take I always if I couldn't do anything I'm like mm, I got this hobby that I can do and I can just keep myself you know, like, out of the trenches, give or take. Um, yeah. And just going outside. And I might be really vague, but when the last time you went outside and did outside stuff, you know? Um, I was in the house one day, and I was like, I don't want to be in this house. Um, and then my dog, I look over my dog. My dog is like, yeah, girl, we should go somewhere. And I took him to the dog park. And I was like, oh, I like this dog park. Like, we outside with it. We cool or whatever. And then I realized, I'm like, man, I didn't overthink today. I didn't have like a little anxiety attack. All because I went outside and did outside stuff. You know, so... Doing things for yourself really helps. Navigating who you are helps a lot. What's the difference between your dream shoe and your everyday shoe? My dream shoe? When you say dream shoe, do you mean like my... That, that one shoe that started it all? or <clears throat> Between the shoes you brought. Okay, yeah. Um... The difference between, honestly, the difference between these, I wear these all the time. You would never see me in my, <laughs> in my dream shoe unless I am doing things and, you know, modeling and whatnot. But um, I realize now that I'm sitting here cleaning my shoe, I realize I cater to this shoe more than I cater to that shoe. You know, when I got here, I was like, hmm, that shoe look a little... You look dingy, even though I don't even <laughs> I don't even wear it like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your experience as a model. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a that's funny. I always like when people ask me that. It is honestly a roller coaster. So. Being the size that I am, I'm not, I'm not what you call, what people, like us people think is plus size. Like, but I'm not skinny also. I'm in the middle. So that was pretty hard being in, in that industry because um, they would want to put me in big girl clothes. Yeah. Even though I'm not, I'm a, I'm just a little thick, you know. I mean, I'm not I'm not big or anything. But they, yeah, they always wanted to put me in big girl clothes, even though the big girl clothes didn't fit me. So they had to stitch me in said big girl clothes. Um, so that was experience. Being told that, and it's funny, being told that I was too big to do stuff was like very like what do you mean I'm too big I'm not I'm not like you know I ain't 300 350 
or anything. So like, what you mean I'm too big? And Maya, at this point in time, I had to been at least like a medium, mm -hmm. but I had hips for days. And that would, that's, that threw people off because when they make their pieces, they make it to fit a certain, certain body type. They didn't make clothes to fit my body type like that with saying like designers and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I get classified as being too big or you're not small enough or, you know, you might be too small. So I didn't really fit in nowhere, if that makes sense. But um, overall, all of, you know, besides all of that stuff, it was actually a great experience. Um, walking and doing shows and meeting different people. Like I met, what's that man's name? He has like that one name, oh, Leon, that played in um, Five Heartbeats. <laughs> I met him and I met his daughter. Um, she was a model. I think she still does model, but she's a model. And I met him and then I met, I met a few other people. I can't even tell you the names of them right now. But being in the room with like designers and people from the fashion industry, it was like, it was dope. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm in the room with these people. Like I'm doing the things with these people and it was like oh I just loved it here and like doing like the behind the scenes stuff and like trying on different clothes and you know getting your hair and makeup done I was like oh I love it here I love it here like <laughs> even though it's like sometimes I was barely told no for like castings and stuff like that. I was I was told no on some occasions, but I was barely told no. And when I was when I got told no for the first time, I was like, What'd you say? Like <laughs> say it again. <laughs> what do you what do you mean by that? <laughs> and um I was like, Oh, so this is what it feels like to get told no. But my mom, and thank God for my mom, honestly, because she was my my momager, she was like, Girl, you didn't need those people. They needed you. And they didn't realize that. So she was always in the mix with everything. And she was always there. If someone did tell me no, she was like, girl, don't worry about it. We got the next one. Like, we about to go to one right now. You got the next one. Just on the third. She was always there to motivate me to keep going, even in, in some points where I wanted to, like, stop. So thank God for her. <laughs> What's the importance of having a parent that has your back? Oh my God. It's, that's very important. Cause I see people with parents who are like, they don't really have their backs like that. And it's like, ew, how did you, did you, you grew up like that? Like that happened to you? And it's like, very, it's very sad nonetheless. So, like when I say like with my mom and my dad and stuff, when I see them, I'm thinking that's how everybody's parents are. But that's not the case. And it's just like, okay, like I get it. But it's, it's very important because those are your biggest cheerleaders. Supposed to be your biggest cheerleaders nonetheless. So it's like when you, especially when you're comfortable with your parents, and you, oh, sorry, but you, you know, you mess up on something and they're like, we're not here to judge you. This is a learning experience. So we, we're here to learn and then we're going to go through it and descend the third. So I, I believe it's very important to have that, that support system from your family or from your parents, nonetheless. What's the pros and cons of working in the modeling industry as a plus size model? Mm. Or were you considered plus size? I was considered plus size. Um, <laughs> the pros and cons in the industry is you don't know who to trust really. And I witnessed that firsthand. Um, I had this agent, I'm not gonna name names or anything, but I had this agent and um, money looked a little short. 
And I was like, this don't make sense. I was told I was getting paid this much, but I received this much. That don't make sense. And turns to find out she was taking money off the top. And I'm like, man, like you recruited me. You wanted me, but you, you're doing me dirty. It's like, why? So it's very, in the industry, it's very hard to find people like that who are, um, who got you in the industry. It's very much a dog eat dog world. You got to figure it out on your own. Don't ask for help because ain't nobody going to help you situation. Like I had to figure it out on my own somewhat with, you know, with my mom and everything. Um, so that's one of the major cons the pros really is when you find that person or those people who is like yeah girl we got you and if we find out there's like a a casting or something well, i'm gonna send it to you we're gonna do this together this and the third or just the people who got your back in general when it comes to being in the industry it's like um it's very important i actually had i actually have i still talk to her every now and then this one lady, she, um, she's very, she's very older lady. And it's funny when I see like older women model, cause I'm like, oh my God, like you're doing it at this age. So that means I can do it at whatever age. But um, it was like, she was like grandma, something to say, not to say like she was old. She was just, she just gave off that warm grandma feeling. And she, when I first started, she like helped me through everything. She was like, you have to do this, this, and this. And then if you don't know how to do this, this, and this, I got you. Um, and then when my mom couldn't be there, she would take me places and she's like, come on girl, get in the car, we gotta go. Like, let's, let's, let's head out and, you know, do whatever. So it's like having her around other than my mom was like very helpful. Cause she helped me navigate through the through the um the industry so bless her heart <laughs> what's three pieces of advice you'd give somebody who's looking to do plus size modeling be confident in yourself people are going to look at you funny and that's their job to judge you, give or take. Um, and you might not like the criticism that they get back and that's okay, but at the end of the day, know that you still that girl or you still that dude no matter what. Um, being friendly to people is another thing. Um, ooh, no. Yeah, being friendly to people is another thing. Um, Knowing that when people come around, cause when you first get into like this room, there's all these models there and you can see people with the stank face, like, ew, why is she here? Or why is he here? Um, and killing them with kindness goes a long way. Cause they're like, oh, she's not that, she's not mean or anything, but like, she's very nice. And now they want to be friends with you. Plus, plus you can you can walk and you're nice. Yeah, girl, come on, let's be friends. Teach me. <laughs> um, and then another thing is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go in the room and give it your all when you see other girls or other dudes and they looks either skinnier than you or their face card never that client like yeah just don't be afraid to go in there do what you got to do and walk out that's it that's all um be mindful within yourself like um no yeah be mindful within yourself make sure that you leave it all there whatever you came in there with it don't that don't matter at the moment just know that you got to get up on that stage and walk and come back and pose and do what you got to do and leave. Um, yeah. <laughs>
why is models walk so important oh you can't it's depending on it's not as important but if you want to be in the runway industry part of it all that's that's really important because um that's what you're judged on you're not really judged on your face as much you're judged on how can you how do you walk down this runway and make my clothes look good give or take um your the the body language within it all is very very important because once again they're not looking at your face even though that's that's important too but they're not looking at your face they're looking at how your body moves with their clothes and if it don't move the way they they want it to then it's like mm, no girl maybe maybe next year or then they'll like try to give you like yeah girl you maybe should just take some courses give or take but um you know that's that's very important when it comes to you know doing runway and stuff like that um yeah what are the different levels of modeling so you have runway you have editorial which is just like really really i don't know how to explain it like really really like vogue have you you never you probably seen like a, a vogue magazine where they look all like um you know weird and whatnot that that and then you have your what do you what do I want to call it like your everyday not like everyday but like your like the non non um not too much editorial but you know like your everyday look give or take um yeah and they all they all collide within each other but it's sometimes some ways more than the other so yeah what was your favorite side of the modeling industry my favorite side had to be the photo shoots even though I love, I love the runway. I loved like being up on stage and like people looking at me, taking pictures of me. Um, but doing the photo shoots were very fun, especially if it was just me and not like other people doing it with me. Um, the way that the whole production is, was like amazing. It was, it was real like, oh my God, like this, this is real. <laughs> um, being, being, um, what's it called? What am I trying to say? Um, being in a magazine. I got published in a magazine. And it was, it was funny because I got published in a magazine with pictures that I hated. I was like, I don't like these pictures. Like, and that photo shoot itself was like a very, it was very long. It went to like, I think we started maybe 12 something in the afternoon and ended 12 at night, give or take. Um, but I'm like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna keep taking these pictures. Because <laughs> why you look like that? I'm gonna keep taking these pictures because um, that's what I'm getting paid for. So let me, let me keep the smile on my face. Just know that I'm tired and hungry, but oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and I didn't. No, I had to bring. I had to bring my own food, and I ate the food because I can. Like you couldn't really eat before, so you're eating like little snippets. Do you know during? And what I had wasn't enough, and I'm like, man, I'm hungry. And I'm looking at the time, I'm like, okay, it's about to be 12 midnight. Why are we still here? It made me like, y'all didn't get the, y'all didn't get the shoots? Y'all didn't get the, y'all didn't get the shots? Is it me? It's, it's not her, it's this internal dialogue. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that ain't, what's going on? But, um, yeah, it was very, it's very hectic. 
um, but I enjoyed it because I'm like, well, this is all about me. And I like being in space, not to be like all arrogant or whatnot, but I like being in a space where it's about me, <laughs> give or take. Um, not really with that photo shoot, but any other ones that I did that didn't take 12 hours to do. <laughs> um, they're very fun and it's very, it's fun being in the room with people who like, yeah, girl, let's, let's put you in this. You're going to look good in this. You're going to take these pictures. You're going to send a third. And <laughs> it's just, it was actually really fun doing all the, the photo shoots, being with different people, meeting different people, like photographers and things like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> What's the proudest piece of work you've been a part of? The proud, oh. That's a good question. Um, the proudest piece of work. I want to say, and you're gonna laugh because it's actually the photo shoot that I hated. Um, it was a part in the photo shoot where we did this all white and black like setup. And um, they had this hat on me that I think I think it was around the time Cardi B came out with that song and she had like, like the really big hat that like covered her face. They gave me one of those and it was like white and black. And um, when I tell you I ate that up, <laughs> I ate that up. Um, and I think in that moment that that one was like very early within the photo shoot. And I, I, I was, I knew that I was given like my all within it. Um, and just seeing how the piece, like afterwards, seeing how the piece like flowed on my body and how that hat was hatting on my head. <laughs> um, and then that picture itself, I think that picture and another picture got published in the magazine. I'm gonna send it to you so you can see it. Um, <laughs> between, yeah, between, I think that one, another one got published, but that one in general, that was like my favorite because I knew I knew I ate that up and I was like, yeah, I can't wait to see it. And then when I saw it, I was like, yeah, look at me. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that was my favorite, my favorite, favorite piece of work. While modeling, have you mm -hmm. ever had to balance anxiety that comes with the work and anxiety that you feel about yourself? Yeah all the time it was never a moment where i didn't have anxiety within it all but it always like depending on what i was doing so let's say i was um let's say i was doing like a like a fashion show or whatever and before it even starts i got i'm getting knots in my stomach i'm like oh my god what if I don't do good? And oh my God, what if I fall and hurt myself and fall flat on my face and people taking pictures while I'm falling flat on my face? And I was like, oh, like Lord. So it was one one in time I was like, I felt all of that. And um, I was like, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do because it's like very, it's very up, not upbeat, it's very fast paced once the show starts once the show starts it's like okay girl you gotta get together like come on put your clothes on take them off put them on um but i was always nervous about falling on the stage because i've seen other people do it i'm like damn that could that could be me i don't want to fall but um once i once i did my first look and got through it and came back i was like oh i can do this there's no issue let's go where the clothes at bring them to me put them on body right now <laughs> um, and just seeing people who were skinnier than me get chosen more to be for walk, well, you know, to walk for other people was very, that kind of like boosted the anxiety that I had. I'm like, man, like, how come I didn't get picked to walk with this person? I love their clothes, like, just in the third. So it was like, um, it was very, uh, you got a humble yourself situation. I was like, girl, you know you good. That's fine. They ain't pick you, that's cool. They ain't have clothes to fit you. They, ain't, they don't make big girl clothes, and that's okay. 
even though you're not a big girl. But um, yeah, so going through all that, it was just a lot. <laughs> As in how you talk to yourself. Yeah. Wait. Let's see these comparisons. Oh. Okay. Good. This one's very clean. Yeah, it's very clean. I did a good job. Look at me. Good job, you. Good job, you. All right. Let me see the bottoms. Well, I didn't do the bottoms. No, I didn't do the bottoms. This one. Okay. Let me see the sides. See, that's gonna work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Did you want to clean the bottom or no? I'm scared to clean the bottom because I was told don't clean the bottom of your shoe. And I'm like, well, why not? It's dirty. I should clean it. I've had come on here, clean the bottom of their shoe. Well, I'm gonna clean the bottom but of your shoe. You're not. You're not everyone. You can no, be your I'm own a clean. person. If that's if that's your process, I don't wanna. I don't wanna break the rules Let your brothers see. have set for you. You know, it's very important rules. It is. No, I ain't gonna clean the bottom of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Del Sol. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, oh. I didn't know you was on here. Hmm? Didn't know this thing was on here. Wait, it, it has a... A little chain. On the back? Yeah, on the that side. with it? Yeah. That's dope as hell. Right? What? Yeah. I was like, oh, this is cute. That's why I bought it. I was Such like, a oh. strong flex. I was like, yeah. Look at that little chain. Jesus. <laughs> I only bought it. I only bought the shoe because I saw the chain on it. I was like, oh, I have to have this. How long have you had these shoes for? I want to say... I don't even know, man. I want to say since... Maybe last year. Not even. I don't even give it last year. Maybe 2021. Give or take. Take. Four years. Take more than give. Yeah. They look really good. Thank you. Well, four years of shoe. Yeah. And I got these because these when they came. Well, no, they came out mm -hmm. officially a year ago. Mm. And I knew somebody who was like, yeah, um, I got the, I got the new ones that's coming so out and I, I yeah. yeah, I was like, yeah, give thing. them to me I'm now. Interested. I got that, I got that thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, give it to me today. What does it mean to be a fan of Jordan shoes? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> be quite honest with you i don't know but some of them fans i'm kind of scared of like i'm not gonna hold you because mm -hmm. they're a little violent how so you didn't hear that the guy i think he um i think he just bought the pair of shoes like he just bought a pair of jordan shoes that that dropped that day and he leaving the store it's a man like shot him for him it took his shoes i'm like oh this is what we're doing. Okay. I don't like it here. This isn't a back in the day story. This is a recent story. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't like it here. I don't like you guys. I'm going to just get my shoes running out as popular. So you don't steal them from me or nothing. <laughs> it's like, why? Over shoes? Over kicks. Not over shoes. You can't, you can't be doing that. As a community. What's your favorite everyday wear story? With shoes or just in general? With these shoes. Um. Hmm. My everyday wear story. Damn, I don't even. I don't think I have one with these. Because normally. Normally when I like come and see you guys. And I'm like, man, I don't have no shoes to wear. And I'm like, what am I wear? And then I see these in the corner. I was like, mm, let me just go ahead and throw these things on. They go with everything, even though they don't really go with everything. Let me throw these thoughts on. Um, but most of the time, if I'm like going out, I'm not wearing tennis shoes. I'm wearing heels. 
is there's something exciting about people dressing you for the fashion shows from the accessories to the article of clothing yes it's very i don't know why it's exciting it just is it's like i feel like a little like a life-size barbie doll when they like put everything on me mm. Mm, excuse me um oh my god i'm sorry deja vu oh my god not even deja vu because you wasn't even this never happened this in a this interaction never happened but why why do i know this interaction oh my god this is a dream this was a, i'm sorry <laughs> this was a dream <laughs> just yeah this right here this was a dream that's crazy and i didn't know like i didn't see your face i just saw like a figure any hoozles. Anyway, that's not the point of this. Any hoozles. This is destined. No, seriously. And watch when I get home, but like, I had that dream. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, just with them like throwing, not even like throwing clothes on me, but like giving me clothes to like put on from the, the shoe to the top, to the pant, to the everything is like, it's exciting because I'm like, oh my god, I'm about to, I'm about to do this thing. They're about to put these clothes on me. I'm gonna look so good in these clothes, and then I'm gonna walk down that runway and be all yeah. So I don't know why it's like exhilarating and exciting, but it is. I'm like, oh, I'm here for this moment. <laughs> What's your favorite part of that process? Um. Honestly, the makeup, I love, cause I do my makeup myself majority of the time. So just to be able to sit down and have someone else do it and make it look good. Cause you know, people gotta be careful with some makeup artists nowadays. They just don't anything on your face. But What's your worst makeup story you've heard of after you're done? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> cause I have a story for that one. Um, but yeah, getting sitting down and letting people draw my face and your face. yeah, just it's just fun. Um, Cause I like do it myself all the time. I'm like, yeah, I love to just be pampered and just sit here and just be the little model. <laughs> but um, horror story of like a, a bad, a bad makeup artist. Oh, sorry. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name names or anything, but it happened to me. It was one lady. Um, it was like maybe five or six makeup artists for this one fashion show, and I'm like, how is this gonna work? It's only like five or six of them, and it's like hundreds of us. But I guess they're gonna make it work. I guess we're gonna start on time, the second and third. Um, we didn't actually start on time that day, but she. I had to fit for some, I think like two or three designers. And um, <laughs> everybody else was already like fitted there. All they need to do was get their makeup done. I was still doing it, still getting fitted for clothes. And after I got fitted, maybe like majority of the makeup artists left. And it was like her and another girl. But the other girl had like maybe three in her line already and she ain't had nobody in her line I was like okay but it's done because the show about to start this and the third so I let her do it I'm like she showed me what the look was I was like all right cool we're gonna just knock this out real quick and then I can go you know start getting ready for everything else and then I knew you know I should have just stopped now I'm saying a story about to myself I should have just stopped her right there I knew once I knew she was gonna like mess up when she did my foundation first and not my eyebrows i was like oh no like to me you have to you gotta do your eyebrows first and then do the rest of the stuff because it, it's just easier that way it looks better that way but she did everything else and then my eyebrows i was like oh she she's palm colored i have to some palm colors do that you know do it that way so i um <laughs> I'm, I'm like okay let me just I'm gonna just I'm gonna hustle through it I'm gonna just <laughs> I'm gonna hustle through it and I'm like it's okay because I have makeup in the back so if if it looks if it looks janky <laughs> stop. 
fucked up. <laughs> She said, oh my god. And I was like, pom 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 pom. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, it's okay if it looks janky, like I can I can like try to fix it, but it was like no fixing what she did to my face. It was to the point where I was like, I took it off myself and like did it myself. But it was so bad. It looked so cakey on me. And it wasn't my shade which made me even more mad because i'm like girl we're not we're not going back into the 70s where y'all put <laughs> like lighter lighter foundation on us dark women we're not going back there i don't want to live that i didn't have to live that so don't don't do that to me and it was just so bad i was like yeah no and it was like maybe 10 minutes before show and I was like, let me hurry up and take this off my face and like do something to my face. If somebody gets mad about it, then I'm going to explain to them why I had to do it myself. But um, yeah, it was like, it was bad, man. It was, <laughs> it was so bad. I was like, oh, God, Lord, just help me get through this. Would you say that there's cultural awareness that's lacking when it comes to some of these folks? Yeah. Cosmetics. That's yeah. what that would be considered, right? Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, we're everywhere, so. Yeah. It's like you can't. It's not really a good excuse that you're not able to handle our palate. Exactly, but um, I think she was more. She was more experienced with her skin tone, and I'm like, who hired you? Because you're telling me. You can only do your skin tone, but you're in a room full of dark skinned um, models and you have to do their faces. You get paid to do their faces. So you're telling me you don't have no type of, no knowledge of, you know, doing darker skin. It's kind of weird, but um, it's a very, it's, it's a lot. It's, not even a lack, it was just, it's just bad all around. Some, sometimes, some cases, I'm not gonna say all cases, but. Um, How was her mistake handled? Like, does that ever get handled? Or is it just chucked up to be in a bad experience? It just chucked up to be in a bad experience. Um, is there nobody you could complain to about that? Y you could complain, but what's gonna happen after you complain? Cause technically she she's here and they, they they charged, they paid for her to be here. So it's like, okay, like now she got to be here. Like there's no nothing. So it's like a experience. You have to just, you got to take that on the chin. And hopefully next time that won't happen to you. But um, do you as a model wish there would be more oversight when it comes to those experiences? Yeah, very much so. Like I need, I need somebody over this lady's shoulder because especially that day like someone needed to be over her shoulder because if she was doing that to my face who knows whatever you know other faces that she did that look kind of crazy but um yeah like it was it was just weird how like there was nobody really like supervising that one per se because i've been the ones where they is it is getting supervised but um like nobody was supervising this lady nobody was like yeah let me just check on everybody make sure everybody's face look presentable and that's that in the third so yeah th this should be but nine times out of ten you're not gonna get that so what are the three biggest brands you've done modeling for um hmm, that's a good question because i haven't really did like a, a really really big brand like a known brand but i've done big brands within their in their state it was pretty big to the people in their state um i did i did new york fashion week several times and it was just i can't remember the line or the the designer's name but she was very she was very big in New York. Like she had her own like um, her own little boutique and everything. And um, 
I'm trying to remember that name. I can't, it was, it, it just flows off the tongue and I'm so mad I can't remember. If I do, I will let you know and you can put it somewhere. But, um, I think, oh, it wasn't really like a brand, but it was for Rick Ross, um, his alcohol line, or whatever Beller. you want to call it. Yes, that's what it's called? Yeah. Beller. Yeah. Um, that was fun. He actually came on the set and was like, hey, everybody. Like, you know, he is. And then he was like there for like maybe 2.5 seconds and left. I was like, oh. It's a blessing that I came. <laughs> Both. I'm here. Now I'm gone. You know, go get me some wings. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Come on, edges. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, that's exactly how that panned out. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's here, and I didn't even get to take a picture of him because I was in the mix of doing the shoot. And then he ended up leaving, and I was like, oh, okay, well, bye. With his little walk. How does Rick Ross walk? <laughs> he, does I don't, he waddle? It, it, does he stride? A little, does it's he like he a. Float? Maybe like a little waddle with a little stride. Like a henna waddle with a stride. I'm like, yeah, you walk that way. You do that. Love that for you. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. Yeah, that was kind of funny though. Just seeing him, I'm like, oh my God, it's Jake Ross. Is he really the biggest boss that you've seen thus far? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> I was like, oh, you, you're, you're that. You're, you're not that. You're tall, but you're not that tall. You're not as big as what you say you are. But okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> What's the importance of a book club? The importance of a book club, honestly, is keeping people engaged. Because even though it's like weird, like you have to pe keep people engaged to do a book club. Yes, because people will join just for just to join. Honestly, like they won't interact. They won't really do much. They're very much like the watchers of it all. That you just sit there and watch stuff occur. So trying to keep people, you know, engaged and everything, having like fun activities and everything for them to do is like very important. We're making and making sure like everybody, everybody's voice is heard. So like recently, before the month of April, um, we did a vote on what month we what book we were gonna read for the month for April. And it was like three different it was three different genres, three different books and and one lady was like, Oh my god, I'm so happy that you're you know, you're doing different genres of books because some people just focus on like romance or like sci fi, but you do it all and it's like it's cool. And I was like, Well yeah, like I want everybody to enjoy you know, being in said book club and not just, you know, you don't think your voice is being heard. You don't think that the genre that you like is not, you know, in the par with it all. So, yeah. What's the differences you see between the modeling industry mm -hmm. and the book club industry? The differences? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of differences. Um, so what's makeup, of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, 
what's to say you don't really have to be you don't really have to be put together to do a book club um like you don't have to know like i didn't know anything really about starting said book club when i started it i just like oh okay i'm gonna start this and then we're gonna see what see what it do um there's like no knowledge of starting a book club at all but i think with the modeling part of it all you have to know at least something to get by and then once you know that something it's it takes you know you you good from there so um that and knowing well i guess it's not a difference it's like a similarity but knowing your target audience something to say especially with book club knowing that you have like i have a group of women who like reading different things it's not just like i said it's not just romance it's not just sci-fi it's you want to read it all so like knowing that um knowing what your audience like and love to do and read and stuff like that it's very it's very important too so yeah how important is belief for the work that you do it's very important honestly um and when you say belief, like in yourself or just within. Whichever one you think is important. Well, believing in yourself is very important, honestly. Knowing that or having that feeling that you, you know, you can do it. You, you are, you're up there. Like you can do it. You're, you're good. Knowing that you can have that train of thought in mind and, um, with that, you can accomplish pretty much anything known to man. Knowing that you can, you know, you have that belief in yourself, like, yeah, I can do this. I'm going I'm to get it done, this, that, and the third. So, um, believing in yourself is very important with the stuff that I do. With both aspects, with the book club and the, the modeling in general, it's very important. Come on. This one ain't looking too good. <laughs> Making me upset. Has your everyday shoe gotten you closer to your dreams? Has my everyday shoe gotten me closer to my dreams? I want to say yes. And then, in the slightest, yeah. Because um, if you think about your everyday shoe, you think of it as something that you carry with you literally every day and um having a little earlier when i said having it look a certain way having you know you have it look a certain way you can go through any door with them on um but yeah i think i think it's helped because i know that i'm confident in what i got on my feet so I can do pretty much anything, <laughs> give or take. Oh, well, that looks better. Cause that was that little spot right there was messing me up. Okay. What's next for you in this chapter of your everyday life? Um, what's With your everyday shoe? With my everyday shoe. Mm. Getting through my struggles within it all. Um, taking it, you know, one day at a time with the morning, honestly. <laughs> um, being more confident in myself. Give or take. Knowing that, 
no matter what like girl you you're gonna get through it no matter the situation give or take if that makes sense what does it take to walk a mile in your shoes oh it takes honestly it takes <laughs> believing in yourself because if you're gonna put these on honestly you have to you got to know what you're doing you have to um be in the right mindset knowing that ooh, knowing that you can do pretty much anything because if you're gonna put these on you gotta at least know that you're capable of doing literally almost anything. Um, yeah. If you're gonna try to, if you're gonna try to like <laughs> walk a mile in my shoe, you gotta, you gotta take the. What's the, how do you say it? What's that saying? I got it off of Bluey too, off a, a little kid show. Um, you gotta take the bad with the good all the time. Uh, yeah knowing that you're gonna have like you're gonna have some fucked up days not to say fucked up days but you're gonna have some messed up days um but just know that you can like just get through it and overcome it and go on to the next day really what two pieces of advice someone has shared with you mm -hmm. that you would want to share with other people? Um, that's a good question. Um, Y'all can't be having all my gems. <laughs> Let's see. Best advice, well, one of the, one of the advices that I got was like, um, know that you are you are very much in your time you're not on anybody else's time but your own you don't have to run through life because someone else is running through life you don't have to have what that person has because they have it just know at one point you you're going to get there eventually but you don't gotta you don't gotta stress over it right now give or take um, and then another one would be always, not even that, What's, that's not a good one. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. Um, this one actually came from my, you know, how in high school, like your last, your last, you know, year of high school, you got that, that yearbook and you got a quote or whatever. Um, my quote was, I'm living in a world, I'm a 10 living in a world full of twos. <laughs> and that quote almost didn't get put in that yearbook. <laughs> but um, I got that quote, I actually made that about myself. Um, I one day I felt like I think I was in I was in modeling practice and some girl I don't even remember that girl's name and I don't even remember her face but she she did something to me and I was like girl you're not you're not the you're not your face card does decline on several occasions on all the occasions girl so like the fact that you're in my face doing whatever you're doing is like kind of weird because you're not all that girl back up a little, a little bit so and that was actually a day where we had to turn in our yearbook quotes and i was like and i said it to her i was like girl i am a 10 living in a world full of twos such as yourself um yeah don't play with me <laughs> so <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> I think that's the most you can sit with a statement I've ever heard you say, but it was earned. Yeah. It was earned. It yeah. wasn't just because yeah, it you wasn't were breathing that day. No. This person actually <clears throat> had you mistaken. 
She did. And you rectified. Mm hmm So I get it. Had to put her in her place, you know? And that's okay, because some people need to get put back in their Everything places. Everything belongs somewhere. Exactly. You, you got lost people trying to get there. People mm hmm Um. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's such a me statement. It's <laughs> such a me quote. <laughs> Would you say you've manifested this life for yourself? Yeah. I have always, always told myself, even like growing up, that I was going to be something. Didn't know what that something was going to be, but I was going to be something. In terms of finding out I'm a, I, you know, I'm a model and I... Honestly, growing up and watching, um, what's that show with Tyra? No, the the one with their the models, America's Next Top Model. Watching that, we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. It's like, girl, nobody was rooting for that girl. <laughs> nobody was rooting for her. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, watching that per se, um, I was like, oh. I can do that. Like, mind you, I'm like maybe six, not even six, maybe like nine, ten, and seeing these grown women doing, you know, being on a show and doing things. Like, I can do that at 10 years old. So, like, why not? And I was like, yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. So, yeah. What's the price you've had to pay in order to become who you are today? Um, I had to let a lot of people go, honestly. Um, from them letting themselves go, and I was totally fine with that, to I don't think you need to be in my space. I think you gotta, you gotta skedaddle because you in the way of where I'm trying to get. Um, yeah, I actually had this this ex of mine, and it was like in my prime time. Oh Lord Jesus! It was in my prime time of modeling, and I had to model with another man, and it was all like platonic. Like we was just in like swimsuits and stuff like that. And he was there. He got invited to set photo shoot because I was like, yeah, you come. It's you know, ain't nothing crazy, and. When I came out with the outfit I had on, he was like, oh, you taking pictures with him? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, I don't want you doing that. I was like, hold cuz, what? You got invited, you don't have, you don't have no sense to put in. Like, we don't need your dollars, you know? This is real business <laughs> and contracts. Exactly, like I'm getting paid to do this, and, be quiet. And you're just an opinion. Exactly, he was like, oh, you're not doing this. And you're not gonna be standing up there with that man, hugging up on that man. I was like, first of all, it is just, a photo shoot. I'm, it's not like I'm about to go home with this man and do the things. None of that. Um, and he was very, and like, even when I like posted pictures of like shoots that I've done, he would be in the comments because other men would like say things like, you know, like how men do, they'd be like, you know, saying little things. And he'd just be in the comments like, oh, don't talk about my girl that way. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm like, stop. <laughs> Cause you're like embarrassing. Like I had to delete some of his comments cause I'm like, bro, like, please stop. It's not cute. Like, it's, I have to sell this thing called a fantasy. That's my job technically. So like, you're not going to sit here and try to like fuck up my coin. You know what I mean? So, or like mess up my coin, give or take. So yeah, letting people go was like the main thing. Would you say people are unrealistic about dating someone in this industry? Yeah. And that maybe there's a lot of insecurities they don't check at the door? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Um. <laughs> it's funny because... I I was in a hypothetical, it was a hypothetical situation where I'm like, hey, if I were to do this, like, would you be okay with said thing that I'm about to do? And the person was like, 
no because like why are you doing that even though even though it's my job like i'm paid to do the things yeah and he's like mm -mm. technically my job is what attracted you to me too to begin with like, so now that you have me or now that we're talking exactly that person that i am doesn't just go go away, away. because we're together exactly and i'm like oh well that's weird and it was like another hypothetical where it's like what if because i think it was like a it was some couple some famous couple and the girl had to to kiss someone like on screen and he was like oh no because why you you don't have to kiss that man i'm like what do you because it's my job it's like i it's in the contract you know like i get paid to do the thing <laughs> So like, what do you, what do you mean? What are you saying? Why are you saying it, to be honest with you? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's very much, people do have like, it does show like their insecurities about things. Cause yeah, it's just suspicious to me. <laughs> Cause that's the reason why you wanted me. Now, now I gotta change that. It don't make sense. Now that you've shared these stories, how do you feel about the retelling of your everyday life? The retelling? Oh, I, I feel good about it. I'm like, people should know the things. If you don't know the things, you should know said things. And how to maneuver through situations and stuff like that. So I honestly feel good about it. Um, I really hope that I help someone get through whatever they're going you know whatever they're going through in their situations so yeah <laughs> if that makes sense okay i want you to put both sneakers on the table okay <clears throat> let me put my friend back on i'm a little chain <laughs> actually i don't think you should put the chain back on no? i think you should lay the chain across the front of the sneaker Ooh, okay for this where's my friend oh you are friend Move this also. Wait until you're done wiping the shoes off. You know how Uber be. No, I don't Uber, but stop Uber. Uber, yes. Uber, no. Uber, yes. Uh, should I put it like down there? Let's see. Go, go, go on the other side. There we go. Okay. All right. This is the day in my shoes. <laughs>